Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today is launch day for our March Stitchy and Quilty Pillow of the Month and I have some new stickers to share too. If you're new to my channel, the last couple years we've done a project of the month. So a couple years ago we did trucks of the month, last year we did houses of the month, and then this year we're doing pillows of the month. The truck and house patterns are still available in my store and you can find some of those videos here on YouTube as well, but today we're going to go ahead and talk about the March patterns. So I'm going to start off with my March stickers. I have been releasing stickers of the month and these are so fun and cute. Thank you for all of your support on the stickers. People are really loving them. I'm having a lot of fun making them. I am trying to make these so they coordinate with our pillow of the month patterns as well. There are six stickers in the pack. They're all high quality vinyl sticker stickers, perfect for water bottles, laptops, guitar cases, whatever you want to put them on. I actually have some on my sewing machine. They're also kind of fun. You could add these to your planners if you're kind of a planner type of person. All right, let's take a look. Looks. They all feature a different pin cushion, so you can have a little collection of pin cushions when you're done. This is the March one. Obviously, it has little clovers for the pin heads. Super cute. And this month I went with a kind of blue and green theme, and you'll see that when we get to the stitchy and quilty versions as well. There's also a little clover in there, patchwork clover. I added in a mug this month, and I think I'm going to keep these mugs because they're really, really cute. This one says, may your points line up and your bobbins be full. They all have a different truck in them. Some of them are these sideways trucks. These are my vintage trucks from all of my vintage truck patterns. And then I also have a couple where it's the back of the truck. February's had one of those and it's just so cute. So I'm kind of alternating between those. They all also will have some sort of a sewing machine. This is a little vintage sewing machine. And then the label down here on the bottom says lucky. And then lastly, we have our block of the month. And look how cute that block is. It's so much fun. This does match the stitchy and quilty versions as well. So those are all of the stickers for March. They are available in my store now. They do go quickly. Um, and like I mentioned in the last video, we are trying to keep those in stock. They do sell out quickly. So there is a possibility that you might have to just, there might be just a little bit of a delay, um, but we are doing our best to keep them in stock. But you guys are loving the stickers, so they're going really fast. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our cross stitch version. So like I mentioned, here is our block for the month and here is our little stitchy version of that. So each month I'm trying to come up with something different to give you a variety of ways to finish your cross stitch. So hopefully you're finding these videos helpful. For this one, I did make it into another little pin cushion and this time I put the fabric out to the side so you can stick your pins over here but still see your beautiful stitchy version. This was really easy to make. Here is the backing. This was a print I've had in my stash for a while. This was from Pam Kitty Morning, I believe, and she just had really cute fabric. I don't think she designs it anymore, but I do have a little hoard of it over here in my stash, and so I pull it out and use it whenever I can. I did film a little video tutorial to show you how to put this together to give you some alternate finishing ideas. So let's go ahead and queue up that video. So to finish this, of course, you need your finished cross stitch piece. I actually cut mine to about four inches by four and a half. I also have a piece of scrap fabric that's about three by five. This was actually a half of a charm pack, I believe. I also have some backing fabric and then some batting. I also have my pillow stuffing. And then I'm going to be using this Rick Rack. This is quarter inch Rick Rack by Lori Holtz. I kind of wish I had a wider Rick Rack, but I didn't have any on hand. So I'm just using that. And then a rotary trimmer is also handy. Next, I'm gonna take my accent fabric and I'm just gonna stitch it along the four inch cut side using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Next, I'll just press that back. You can finger press it or press with an iron. Then I'm gonna take my Rick Rack and just sew it right along that seam to cover up the seam. And I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of a piece so that I have some extra hanging over the edge just to give me some leeway. Once I'm done doing that, I'm just gonna trim off the excess fabric and my piece is finishing up at about four by seven, but you can make it any size you want. The next thing I did was trim up my batting so it's the exact size as my piece, but before I sew things together, I'm going to trim off one half an inch from both sides of my batting. That's actually gonna make my batting slightly smaller than my stitched piece. And as you can see here, my batting's about a quarter of an inch smaller on all four sides, and that's gonna reduce some of the bulk when we sew our little pillow together. Next, I'm gonna take my backing fabric and just place that right side up. I'm going to place my stitched piece right side down along with that batting on top of there. 
I'm going to sew around all four sides and then we need to leave an opening to turn this right side out. You can leave your opening anywhere you want, but since we have a seam on that bottom side, I'm going to leave my opening over on the right edge because it's just solid fabric and that'll be a little bit easier. Now I'm just gonna trim away some of that excess fabric so it's a little bit easier to work with. Now we'll take this to our machine and sew around all those sides. Again, I'm going to backstitch at my stop and start to give me a little bit extra strength when I turn it right side out. And here I have it all sewn together. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is just press back this open edge. That's just gonna give me a seam so that when I flip it right side out, that fabric is already pressed and it just makes it a little bit easier when you're hand sewing that opening closed. Next, I'm gonna trim off all of the excess fabric around all four sides of my piece. And then just carefully, I'm going to trim off those corners. That'll reduce the bulk in those corners. Just be careful not to trim into your stitch line. And as I'm watching this video back, my finger got really close there, but I didn't cut it. So there you can see I trimmed off the corners, but not trimmed through the stitch line. And then I'm just giving that crease one more press before I turn my pillow right side out. And then just really carefully, I am going to turn this pillow right side out. And I'm just doing it a little bit at a time, just being careful as I work that out. I also find it helpful to use my Hera marker slash point turner. This is made by Clover. And I'm just carefully pushing out those corners. Just be careful you don't go through your stitch line. Or in my case, my fabric on the backing is a little bit thin. So I'm just being careful not to poke through that fabric. And then again, I'm gonna give this a quick press and then just re-roll that seam really quick so that I have a nice edge when I'm going to stitch it closed. Now the next step is just to stuff it completely with either pillow stuffing or you can use walnut shells like I did in our February video. I actually really like the walnut shells. I just didn't have enough for this one so I am using pillow stuffing and I like to use my fingers but I also use my point turner every now and then to shove that stuffing down into the corners. And then here you can see, since we pre-pressed those seams, we have a nice edge to work with when we're sewing them shut. I'm going to sew this pillow closed using the ladder stitch. I show how to do that in detail in our January video. So if you missed that, head back over there and you can see how to do that. But there you can see that seam looks really nice. And one cool thing about doing it this way is we've got that fabric side where we can put our pins, but we also have our pretty stitch side facing up as well. So as you can see, finishing off your cross stitch can be a lot of fun. You can do it in a lot of different ways. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, especially these cute little pillows. You can make them any size that you like. If you are new to our pillow of the month series, I am stitching all of mine on this Witchell Beautiful Beige. It is 14 count Ada. 14 count is good for me. It's easy for me to see and stitch on. And so I'm gonna stick with that for mine. You could also use a 28 count like Lugana or something like that if you prefer, but I'm gonna stick with the 14 count. I am using all DMC floss but you can of course substitute it out with some fancy floss if you prefer that as well. All the floss is obviously listed in the pattern. And then one other thing to note, all the individual pillows have a different border around them. So this one has, tried to make it like a four leaf clover border there. So the borders are a little bit different on each of the pillows, but each of the patterns do come with a whole cloth finishing option. So don't let that confuse you, but I wanted to add something in case you don't want to sew them all into little individual designs. So I have a whole cloth finishing that comes with each of the pillows, and then you would just add each month's pattern into one of those spaces. And so hopefully that makes sense. There are instructions in the pattern as well, but those borders on that one are different because I wanted them all to match for the whole cloth. So the individual pillows come with their own border. If you wanna do the whole cloth version, stitch the whole cloth border and then just add the months as they are released. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, they do finish at about three by three. And then of course, however you finish your pillows, the size might vary. So this January pillow, I just finished really super plainly. The February one, I added some little patchwork fabric around it, so that's really cute. And then this one, we added the side panel too. So there's a lot of different finishing options for these. I'm gonna keep trying to come up with new ways. If you have any suggestions, feel free to email me. I'll probably be running out of ideas as we get further on through the months, but I'd love to be able to share some alternate ideas and hopefully that'll give you some inspiration on how to finish your cross stitch pieces. Okay, so I think that's it for the stitchy piece. Let's go ahead and talk about the quilty pillow. Okay, so here is our quilty pillow version. It's that same lovely 
star shape. And for this one, I dug in my scraps. I used a variety. There's Bonnie and Camille prints in here. The background, I did a low volume fig tree print, and that is from one of their eyelet collections. And then this little low volume inside here is a Bonnie and Camille print, or it might have just been from Camille Ross Kelly's line. These are all from my stash. And I do encourage you to dig in your stash for these projects. The fabric requirements are on all of the pillows, but there's a lot of smaller pieces. You can make them really scrappy and just have a lot of fun with them. And then they are finished as an envelope backing on the back. On my last couple, I didn't add binding, but I thought since this pillow had a little bit of a space between the star and the edge, I thought this might be a good pillow to do binding on. So here's what my binding looks like. This was just a gingham print. This again is a Bonnie and Camille print. I think it was one of the ginghams from Vintage Picnic, but like I said, it's been sitting in my stash for a while, so I'm not 100% sure. I just know it is a Bonnie and Camille print, and then so is that pillow backing. Since I went ahead and added the binding, I did go ahead and add a label. This is just a sew-in label. This is from Ever Emblem, and I will link her shop below. She does customized labels. She has their iron-on. She has some of the sew-in kind. She has a variety of different styles on her website. So definitely head over and check those out. I love adding those to my smaller projects. Now getting the points to line up for this block can be a little tricky. So I have a few tips for you. This pillow uses half square triangles and I'm making mine eight at a time and four at a time, mainly because it's faster. But if you're not comfortable with this method, you can also make them one at a time. The finished cutting measurements are in the pattern, but I wanted to show you this because I do get some questions. There are some people who don't like to do it this way because when we do it this way, we're cutting things on the diagonals, which means we're working with bias seams. So one of my tips for working with bias seams is to either pre-start your fabric or use something like Mary Ellen's Best Press as you go to help give your fabric a little bit more structure and stability. Now, because I'm working with scraps a lot of the times for these pillow projects, I don't wanna to have to get out my whole big starching thing and you know starch large pieces of fabric only just to cut them down. So a lot of times what I will do is go ahead and pre-cut my fabric and then I will use the Mary Ellen's Best Press. And I'll show you how to do it today. I also have a full video on how to use this on my YouTube channel as well. It goes into a little bit more detail, but essentially all that we need to do in order to starch these little pieces is just spray them with Mary Ellen's Best Press. You can also do both sides or just one side. Sort of depends on how stiff you want your fabric to become. I typically do both sides, but I don't fully saturate it either. I just give it a light spray, press it, flip it, give it another light spray. And then all you're gonna do is just take your iron and we're just going to press this until it dries. And so it just takes a minute or two. I'm using my Laura Star steam iron and you can also pop a little steam on there as well if you want. And then again, like I said, you can flip it over, spray the other side and starch the other side. And the cool thing about the Laura Star is it's a dry steam. So these pieces dry really quickly and it's also nice and hot. So even if you're not using your steam, you can just sit here and press them until they're dry. And I do have a full review and information on this iron. I will link it below as well, but I have a full review on my YouTube channel. So here are my pieces for this project. And we're gonna make the four at a time half square triangles first. So we're gonna place our printed fabric right side up and our background fabric right side down. And as you can see, I've drawn a line from corner to corner on the back of my fabric. I'm gonna take this to my machine and sew around all four sides using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And here's what it looks like. And then one cool thing about having our lines already drawn is we have a mark here in the corner so we know where to pivot at. So we can sew down, leave our needle in that down position, pivot our piece and then keep going and we'll have our perfect quarter of an inch right there on the corners. Now I did give you a little bit of extra fabric for these so they don't have to be totally perfect but it's just a little tip I thought I would share. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside for right now and we're gonna do our eight at a time half square triangles. Now for the eight at a time, we're gonna do something just slightly different. So here's our piece right side up, here's our backing fabric right side down, and then I've drawn lines at exactly halfway vertically and horizontally. I'm also then going to draw my diagonal lines as well. And my piece isn't exactly square. I think I was cutting out of some scraps here, but I think it should be good. All right, so now we've got diagonal lines plus vertical and horizontal lines. 
Now we're gonna take this over to our machine and we're gonna sew one quarter of an inch on both sides of our diagonal lines. We're not gonna sew on these horizontal and vertical lines. Those are gonna be cutting guides for later. So just sew on both sides of your diagonal lines. All right, so I've sewn on both sides of my diagonal lines and now we're ready to cut these apart. So for our four at a time half square triangles, we're actually now gonna be cutting on our diagonal lines. So we're just gonna cut that way. I don't move anything around and cut this way. And then as you can see now, we've got our half square triangles. I'm gonna press all of these towards my darker fabric. So we've got four half square triangles there. We're gonna set that one aside. For our eight at a time, we're actually gonna cut both vertically, horizontally, and diagonally in both directions. And that's gonna give us eight half square triangles. I'm just gonna give a quick press right there, and then again, just press them back. And that's what I do on all of them. Just set that seam. And with this iron, you don't even really need to press down super hard. I'm actually hovering over the fabric a little bit. And there's our four, and then here is our eight. I'm gonna do the same exact thing Now one of the things I always do is trim up my blocks before I move on to the next step, pretty much in any project. And whenever you're doing half square triangles, that's almost a must. My patterns always have a little bit of extra so you can trim them down to the exact size in case you get a little wonky on your sewing. And I wanted to give you a couple of tips. First off, if you have a ruler that's the exact size you need, you can line that diagonal line right along that seam and just trim right around the edges and it makes a really nice half square triangle. If you don't have the perfect size, you can still use one of your rulers. Again, hopefully it has a diagonal line on it. These creative grid ones do. And I just, again, line that line up right along that seam. And here is my cut line. So I just make sure that I have enough fabric around the outside to trim it out. And then the other option you can do are these block lock rulers. A lot of people really like these rulers because it has this little groove right here that fits your seam right in it, which makes it for really nice, easy trimming because the, it kind of locks your block right in on that seam. And then if you press towards your darker fabric, one rule of thumb that you can use with this is that your seam is inside the darker fabric, so your block lock words will be on the lighter fabric when you go to trim it. Again, pay attention to your lines and then trim it this way. So you're not really ever lifting up your ruler. And then we have a perfect half square triangle. So these are kind of handy. I just try and remember to keep the words on the low volume because I'm always pressing towards the darker print and then I don't have any problems. If you accidentally have it backward and line it up with that seam, as you can see, your cut line is gonna be off. And I've done that before. So just be careful, just keep the words on your low volume or your background and your seam on the darker side. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have one that's the right size, you can just line up that diagonal line right on there. Just like that. I do turn it around and do that again. The other thing I'm checking is that my line is lining up with both points of my fabric right there. So that I'm getting a nice, crisp, half square triangle edge. And there we go. Hopefully those tips on how to square these up are helpful. And I would say, don't run out and buy any specialty rulers, just use what you have. But I do have a tendency to have several different square sizes on hand just to help me because I always like having the actual size one. I just think that's the easiest way to go. But again, you can also use whatever you have on hand. And then our next block is gonna be made using a snowball technique, which I've also showed in some of my Sew With Me series, but I wanted to show it here again because I have a couple tips for you. So the top two snowballs are gonna be the white, the bottom two are going to be the colored. So we're gonna set the colored printed ones aside. And we're just gonna do the top first. So I'm taking my piece and I'm just putting it right up here in the top corner. And we're gonna sew right on this diagonal line. 
One little tip I have whenever I'm snowballing corners is I sew just a hair to the outside edge, so towards this edge. So I sew almost right next to that line. That's gonna give me a little bit of flexibility when I press this back to make sure that my block trims up to size. Now I ran out of bobbin like right here, so I had to pick it back up, but hopefully you can see right here that I sewed just a hair to the outside edge of that drawn line. And now when I go to press that back, it gives me just a little bit of extra to work with. And before I trim this off, I'm actually going to line up my piece with that edge, and that way I'm getting a perfect corner here. And I can just give it a quick little press, and now I can come over and trim one quarter of an inch away from my stitch line, and I know that this is relatively accurate. We're still going to trim this block up when we're done. Now we're going to go ahead and add the second piece, I'm gonna do the same thing, so just a hair to the outside edge. Again, I'm just going to press this back, and try and line that up with my existing fabric. Now I can trim that off, and we're ready to add our bottom pieces. We're gonna do them the exact same way, so again, so just a hair to the edge, press it back, and then trim it off. And then time to add our last one. And here we have our finish. And if you look at that, it already looks really nice and straight. Whenever you're doing these blocks where you're snowballing all four corners of the block, it's really easy for it to get a little bit wonky. So my number one tip is Mary Ellen's Best Press on these, and my number two tip is to press back those edges, line them up with the existing fabric, and then trim off that extra, and then that way you're gonna have a nice block. Now I still am going to trim this up before I proceed on, but I did wanna share those tips with you because I think just even looking at it, you can tell it's looking pretty accurate. We've got nice quarter inch points right here as well. And just to keep it real, I thought I would share with you that I got this all basted up before I realized that I'd sewed on the top row upside down. So no harm done. I just went ahead and seam ripped it, sewed it back the correct way, and now we're ready to quilt. And then you can stuff these with either a 20 by 20, or I also like to do a 22 by 22 pillow insert. Putting a little bit of a larger pillow insert into your pillow cases makes them just a lot fuller and fluffier. And I personally just think they look a lot better. So I always like to do that, but you can do whatever you have on hand. And then like I've mentioned in the other videos, I actually just have this one pillow insert and every month I just swap it out with my cover so that I don't have to have a ton of pillows being stored. And then these pillow inserts, um, once you take them off, they just lie flat and you can keep them rolled up or folded up in a closet and then just bring them out for each season. So I took the pillow out really quick just so you can see it. I, see, I think sometimes you can see the pattern a little bit better, but as you can see, I have this extra border around the star. And so that's why I thought maybe the binding would be a good option for this pillow. I haven't added a binding to any of our pillows yet this year. And so I thought now would be a good time to do it. The pattern does include two ways to finish these. It shows you how to do the binding, but it also shows you how to do um, just sew them right side together and then flip your pillow out. If you would like help on how to finish these, head back and check out our January pillow. I did put a full video in there on how to finish it both ways. And I do have a couple other pillowcase videos here on YouTube as well. Now for the quilting on this, I couldn't decide what to do. And my daughter said, well, try and do some clovers, mom. And I was like, okay, well, I've never done that before. So <laughs> here we go. So as you can see in the middle there, I did one four leaf clover clover. All of the rest of them are actually little three leaf clovers. And I don't know, it might be kind of hard to see, but I think there's one right here. You've got like a little clover. And then the rest of it is swirls. So I did swirls and clovers, swirls and clovers, just wherever I felt like it. So I'm honestly just having fun with these and making them up as I go. If you're nervous about quilting your own things, these are a great way to start. Like I said, they're smaller projects, they're easy to move around, and they're not quite as intimidating as like a whole quilt is. One thing I would suggest, I do have a couple video tutorials here on how to do straight line quilting and free motion quilting. But if you're ready to just jump in, I would suggest getting a piece of paper and a pin. You hold your paper, you know, on the table flat like this, hold your pin straight up and down, and then just try and do whatever design you're into without lifting up your pin. And just try not to get yourself stuck in any corners or anything like that, and just have fun with it. Try a couple different designs, try something easy like a meander, do some swirls, and then add in something like maybe a little clover or something and just see how it goes. 
those. I like to do swirls with stars. I do swirls with pumpkins. I've done swirls with hearts for my Hearts in Bloom quilt. This one was swirls with clovers. Swirls are a great way to fill up space in between your design. And because you can cross over your stitches like that, it's a good way to be able to get yourself out of a jam. Because if you're heading in a direction and you're like, oh no, <laughs> you know, you can just keep going out the other side. So I do recommend swirls if you're a beginner. They're, they're just an easier way to get in and out of spaces. And then, like I said, add in some fun elements and just have some fun. If you do make those and you are quilting your own, I would love to see how you're doing. So please post your progress in our Sew With Me group on Facebook. I will make sure to link that below this video. We have a lot of fun over there and everybody shares their progresses and their works, their finishes, and it's just a lot of fun to see how everybody completes the projects. Plus, I think it's kind of fun to share your work as well with like-minded friends. So that's it for today's video. You can get all of those patterns plus the stickers in my store at store.confessionsofahomeschooler.com. I will link it below, but if you go to the store, right on the homepage is a link. It shows the January pillow and it just says pillow of the month. Just click there and it'll bring you to all of the pillows that have been released so far. Right now, they're only PDF. And I've had a few questions about that. Once all the pillows are released, I will bundle them up and put them into a paper pattern. And I do usually do a little bit of a discount for that bundle, so just be aware of that if you are waiting for that bundle to come out. That's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoy our March releases. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a wonderful month and I will see you in the next video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So if you're new to my channel, every month I launch. So if you're new to my channel for the past half, if you're new to my channel every month, I think every month I'm trying to do something different and creative just to give you a few different ideas on how to finish your crosswork. And so this crosswork, cross, cross stitch. <laughs> so every month I'm trying to come up with something new and different to try. Bleh.